But that's not all, folks. Here's the real blockbuster. Brace yourselves, you might want to sit down. Spider-Man's real. Spider-Man's real name is... Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 best decisions made by Marvel. Guys. Call it, Captain. For this list, we're looking at the wisest and most successful decisions made by Marvel Studios for their films, both in the MCU and others. If there's a marvelous Marvel decision you decided should have made our list, make the right choice and tell us yours in the comments. Number 20. Making Kevin Feige President of Marvel Studios The Marvel Cinematic Universe has had a lot of people that have contributed to its overall success. When the audience opens themselves up to laughter, you can then also yeah. sneak them in with the, with the emotion. Right. Uh, and I think that is why people combo. talk about a Marvel formula. Humor is a big part of it. However, it's hard not to attribute at least a decent chunk of its success to Marvel Studios President Kevin Feige. He envisioned Marvel's interconnected universe. His passion for the material is evident, and his bold choices on what to greenlight have led to some unexpected successes for the franchise. Having the, uh, the liberty to dream about what would be possible in success, but not to lose sight that you will not have success if whatever you're working on right, right now doesn't right. work. A lot of cinematic universes have sprung up since the MCU began, but few of them have had the same kind of success. Part of that is likely because they didn't have someone overseeing their films with as much enthusiasm as Feige. Number 19. Casting Charlie Cox as Daredevil Daredevil is one of the best superhero shows ever made, and its lead actor Charlie Cox helped make it so. My name is Matt Murdock. This is my associate, Foggy Nelson. Do you mind if we sit down? She gave a big shrug. I said we go with it. We understand you're in some trouble. Cox plays Matt Murdock, a.k.a. Daredevil, the blind lawyer turned vigilante superhero. He absolutely not only nails the physicality of the role, with his convincing mannerisms and superb execution of choreography in the now legendary fight scenes, but also Matt Murdock's heart. Beyond these walls, he may well face a judgment of his own making. But here, in this courtroom, the judgment is yours, and yours alone. Whether he's delivering a speech in a courtroom or to the Punisher on a rooftop, Cox always brings his A-game. And given his appearance in more MCU properties recently, we're positively ecstatic that he's sticking around. Number 18. Bringing back J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson J.K. Simmons is J. Jonah Jameson, full stop. The crap. 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 Mega crap. Rarely has an actor been so utterly perfect for a role. Simmons perfectly captures the news magnate's blustering, larger-than-life personality. He's easily one of the highlights of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy with his rapid-fire delivery and his hilarious self-centered attitude. Serious? So, when the character returned in the MCU, it may have been a no-brainer to bring Simmons back, even if he can no longer pull off Jameson's flat top. But we still have to applaud Marvel Studios for doing it anyway. There you have it, folks. Conclusive proof that Spider-Man was responsible for the brutal murder of Mysterio. Number 17. Letting Cap Lead If the MCU had a star early on, it was arguably Tony Stark. So Marvel could have easily built the Avengers and therefore the Infinity Saga solely around him. But instead, Marvel gave Captain America the leadership role. His first film may not have been a smash hit, but his brand grew as the character grew, becoming more successful and more charismatic as time went on. That is America's ass. <sighs> not only could he kick ass, but Steve Rogers pulled at our heartstrings with his speeches too. Cap was always worthy. It just took audiences and some Avengers a while to see that. I knew it. Number 16. Waiting to drop Avengers Assemble One of the most iconic catchphrases for Marvel Comics is Avengers Assemble. Usually delivered by Captain America, this line was much anticipated by Marvel fans to see delivered on the big screen. The MCU teased it several times, first with the title of the first Avengers movie, which is Avengers Assemble in the UK and Ireland. A 
Additionally, Cap almost says the line at the conclusion of Age of Ultron. Avengers! However, it isn't until the finale of Avengers Endgame that he finally delivers it. The heroes have all returned through portals to face Thanos and his armies, and right when everything is at its peak hype, Avengers! Assemble. The wait was so worth it. Number 15. Taking a Chance on Blade Superhero films during the 90s were more often misses than they were hits. Yet even so, the then-desperate Marvel gambled on the success of Blade, a darker property of theirs about the titular vigilante half-vampire vampire hunter. You've been exposed to them. One way or another, somebody's gonna take you out. The edgy attitude of the film, along with its awesome action and Wesley Snipes being perfectly cast, helped propel Blade to being Marvel's first successful adaptation. You have a lot of love for him, don't you? We have a good arrangement. He makes the weapons, I use them. Marvel may not have gotten a big cut of the film's success, but Blade helped pave the way for the Marvel renaissance of the last few decades. Number 14. Making Animated Spider-Man Movies Spider-Man films generally do well, but a theatrical animated film about a Spider-Man who's not Peter Parker was still quite the roll of the dice, at least for executives. There's only one Spider-Man, and you're looking at him. But thanks to the folks behind Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, the idea proved to be not only a financial success, but also a hit with critics and audiences alike. And it's a no on the cape. I think it's cool. Take that off, it's disrespectful. Ah! Spider-Man doesn't wear a cape. The animation is incredible and gorgeous. The characters feel authentic and the performances are excellent. And the humor? Chef's kiss. And its sequels are set to be just as exciting. Stop what you're doing and stop Spider-Man. You? Wait, you? After so many Spider-Man stories, Marvel needed to do something different. And these movies feel like fresh and dazzling takes on the hero. Make that heroes. Number 13. Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool In another perfect match between actor and role, Ryan Reynolds is so much like Deadpool we wouldn't be surprised if the character reached out across universes and controlled him like a puppet. Hey, oh! Oh, hello. I know, right? Reynolds imbues the irreverent immortal mercenary with the endlessly amused glee that he deserves, while also delivering Wade Wilson's rare serious moments with conviction. The Deadpool movies probably could have been made without Reynolds involved, but we'd argue that they'd be nowhere near as successful without his effortless charisma and cheeky humor. I'm a zeitgeist. Cool. I like you so you have the power to put your finger on the, the pulse of society. N no. No, I spit acidic vomit. Oh. Do you want me to demonstrate? No, yeah, we'll thank take your you. Word for we'll, yeah, listen, we've all eaten at Arby's. And with Deadpool's forthcoming entrance into the MCU, Reynolds is bound to continue killing it in the role. We'd start a pool about it. Number 12. Splitting Infinity War into two movies. The roadmap to the MCU wasn't exactly clear cut in the beginning. The plan to build up a confrontation with Thanos was there, but exactly how wasn't decided on until 2014. It was here that Avengers Infinity War was first announced, and that it would have two parts. There are two more stones on Earth. Find them, my children, and bring them to me on Titan. Father, we will not fail you. This decision turned out brilliantly for a number of reasons. From a financial perspective, obviously two movies will make more money than one. But it worked out wonderfully for the story, too. Infinity War was able to give Thanos the proper development, as well as deliver a monumental cliffhanger that got everyone hyped for the sequel. And Endgame had more room to pay tributes to films before and deliver an epic, satisfying finale. You could not live with your own failure. Where did that bring you? Back to me. Number 11. Including Stan Lee in every movie. Marvel movies usually feature a lot of in-jokes and Easter eggs. And while those are fun, the most beloved recurring elements of Marvel films are Stan Lee's cameos. The legendary late Marvel Comics creator appeared in almost every Marvel theatrical film ever made. Welcome back to the Baxter, Dr. Richards. I've got the usual for you. Good to have you back, sir. 
Lee usually only had a line or two, but whether he's giving hope to Spider-Man or getting Tony Stark's name wrong, his presence rarely fails to make Marvel fans laugh or warm our hearts. Are you Tony Stank? Yes, this is, this is Tony Stank. Lee may have passed on, but his legacy in comics and on film is one we'll always treasure. Number 10. Taking a Chance on James Gunn and Guardians of the Galaxy Before Guardians of the Galaxy came out in 2014, the interplanetary superhero team was far from a household name. And James Gunn wasn't exactly a big-name director either, best known for his films Slither and Super. We're the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yet Marvel's decision to take a risk on lesser-known Marvel characters and an indie director paid off big time. The Guardians movies are some of the MCU's most memorable, boasting plenty of humor, heart, action, and killer soundtracks. They catapulted Chris Pratt to superstardom, made audiences fall in love with a talking tree, and there isn't enough time in the day to discuss how hilarious Dave Bautista is as Drax. His people are completely literal. Metaphors are gonna go over his head. Nothing goes over my head. My reflexes are too fast. I would catch it. I'm gonna die surrounded by the biggest idiots in the galaxy. Number 9. Making Deadpool and Logan R-rated Guys, seriously, you don't wanna do this. Most superhero movies are limited to a PG-13 rating in order to broaden their audiences and take in a larger profit. Yet, surprising few fans, but probably a few executives, some of Marvel's first big R-rated movies, Deadpool and Logan, did huge business. Until your weekend. Weekend? Back up. Weekend? The hard R rating gave them the maturity and immaturity that they needed to do the source material justice. While a PG-13 version of Deadpool was subsequently released, reviews were decidedly mixed. What, what the f- <laughs> Easy now, hey. The only F-bomb we're using around here is Fred Savage. Sure, violence and adult language aren't requirements when catering to adult audiences, but they certainly didn't hurt in these films. <sighs> Don't be hot, they made you. Number 8. Loki as the first big bad I changed. So have I. Now fight me. It's no secret that the Marvel Cinematic Universe has had something of a villain problem. And so, with their first big crossover film, it was crucial that they find a big bad worthy of bringing Earth's mightiest heroes together. Send the rest. Thankfully, with Loki, they got that and more. Although he began as Thor's nemesis, Loki is charismatic enough to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of the Avengers. His wide appeal owes more than a little to actor Tom Hiddleston, whose performance has made Loki a fan favorite. I have been falling for 30 minutes! Witty, sarcastic, ambitious, but also sympathetic, Loki broke the two-dimensional villain mold and helped make the Avengers an incredible film. If it's all the same to you. <sighs> I'll have that drink now. Number 7. Recasting Hulk with Mark Ruffalo Hulk! Smash! The Incredible Hulk may not have been the massive hit that Iron Man was, but it was still reasonably well-received and Edward Norton made for a memorable Bruce Banner slash Hulk. Considering these facts, it was surprising and a little worrying at the time to hear that the role was being recast. And what if the other guy says no? Thankfully, Mark Ruffalo did a wonderful job of filling Norton's shoes, arguably bringing even more nuance to Banner while making the Hulk much more relatable than in the 2008 film. That's my secret, Cat. I'm always angry. Like Chris Evans as Captain America, he fits the role so well that, in hindsight, it's difficult to imagine anyone else playing the character. I, I see this as an absolute win. Number 6. Casting Hugh Jackman as Wolverine Ladies and gentlemen, As brilliant as it was to cast acclaimed thespians like Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen in X-Men, we'd argue that it was even smarter to take a chance on then-little-known Australian actor Hugh Jackman. You all right? Jackman may not have had Wolverine's comic book build, at least in his first outings, but he has the attitude, ability to embody Logan's rage and regret in equal measure, and he has great comic timing when needed. What exactly are you professor of, Mr. Logan? Art. Jackman went on to play the character for 17 years, showing a level of commitment and dedication to the role that few actors are willing to give. 
For fans, this translated into countless great moments, plus a level of slow-building character development rarely seen in an action franchise. Take your friends and run. They don't, they'll keep coming and coming. You don't have to fight anymore. Number 5. Building up to the first crossover Mr. Stark, you become part of a bigger universe. You just don't know it yet. Who the hell are you? Given how many studios have attempted to emulate the concept since, it can be easy to forget just how revolutionary a superhero team-up movie was back in 2012. The Avengers blew audiences away, and multiple crossover films later, it still holds up. Part of what makes the film so successful, however, is the foundation that the MCU laid before it. You gonna be okay? Yeah. Yeah, I just... I had a date. Marvel released carefully crafted films for its individual heroes before attempting to bring them together. Not only did this create hype, it also helped us to get to know these versions of the characters in their own respective worlds before seeing them play off of one another. I know, that's great, right? Another! <laughs> if only Marvel's imitators had learned from their example. Number 4. Casting Tom Holland as Spider-Man You're the Spider-ling. Crime-fighting spider. spider. You're Spider-Boy? Spider-Man. There have been a lot of Spider-Man over the last couple of decades. That brings with it a risk of burnout and a whole lot of pressure for any newcomer to don the iconic outfit. But thankfully, Marvel got it just right when they cast Tom Holland. I don't want to go. I don't want to go, sir. Please. Please, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Holland brings a wonderful, youthful enthusiasm to the role, and it's infectious. His Peter Parker and Spider-Man are a pleasure to see in action, with an ideal balance between the character's humorous and vulnerable sides. But Doctor Strange was there, right? And he was like, it's been five years, come on, they need us. And then he started doing the yellow sparkly thing that he does all the time. What are you doing? Holland's casting also worked well for Marvel, since many of its male leads tend to be around the same age, and Holland's youth gave younger audiences a hero to relate to. I really like you. I really like you too. <laughs> Number 3. Giving their filmmakers greater autonomy Hey man, we're about to jump on that ginormous spaceship. You wanna come? Well, you do seem like you're in desperate need of leadership. Why, thank you. Marvel Studios has kept a pretty tight leash on their directors, at least in the MCU. Their stringent set of guidelines and restrictions reportedly played a part in what drove Joss Whedon away after Avengers Age of Ultron. Oh, I have all these restrictions, but I also have all these guidelines. Therefore, it's great to see that they've lessened their hardline stance and have started allowing directors to have more input. James Gunn's vision for Guardians of the Galaxy was mentioned earlier, but directors Taika Waititi and Ryan Coogler imprinted Thor Ragnarok and Black Panther respectively with their own inimitable styles. The Grandmaster used to set first good times, orgies and stuff. Did you just say the Grand Master used it for orgies? Yeah. Don't touch anything. Marvel seems to realize they've got a good thing going. Number 2. Bringing Spider-Man into the MCU Alright, I've run out of patience. On to Ruse! Spider-Man is unequivocally Marvel's biggest name hero, or at least he was before the MCU. But in the 1990s, Marvel sold off the movie rights to the character, along with many others. Fortunately, Marvel was able to achieve a deal with Sony that got us Tom Holland's Spider-Man in their cinematic universe. In 2019, Marvel and Sony had a falling out over the future of the character, giving Marvel fans a collective heart attack. However, the companies were soon able to reach a new, rather secretive deal. You guys were nice. Please don't leave us, Spidey. Sorry. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Casting Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man Truth is, I am Iron Man. 
Marvel Studios has made a lot of good decisions to get them where they are now, but none of them has paid off quite as much as casting Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark, also known as Iron Man. Stark, we need a plan of attack! I have a plan. Attack. RDJ's compelling and charismatic performance fit like a glove, and was the perfect choice to kick off and often lead the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It doesn't hurt that Downey's personal journey paralleled Marvel's own, both having fallen on hard times, but managing to dramatically turn their fortunes around. Sorry. I'm a piping hot mess. It's fair to say that without Downey, we wouldn't have the MCU as we know it. Thank you, sir. You are Iron Man. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.